Hello, hello. Welcome back to our show, A Year of Magical Learning. Uh, we are up to book 48 today. Um, Chris, why don't you take it? Yeah, um, yeah, excited about this book. This book was a, um, a, a, an interesting book. Um, it's called uh, The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime by Mark Haddon. Um, you, ever, you ever heard of it, heard of it before? No, nope, can't say I have. Um, so this is a this is one of my rare fiction books. Um, uh, okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it actually. So it was uh, um, the book was called, or the, so the book's about uh, this this young um, autistic kid. Um, his name is uh, uh, Christopher, and he, uh, uh, you know, he's autistic. He, he's 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 uh, he relates well. Like the description says, you know, he re relates well to animals, but he has no understanding of human emotions. He can't stand to be touched. He hates the color yellow. Um, and um, and this the story is about the improbable story of Christopher's quest as he investigates the specific specific suspicious death of the neighborhood dog, um, mm -hmm. and um, and kind of how he is going about. Un he's like a detective basically, um, and uh, and as a autistic kid, and the whole perspective is from his point of view basically and um and it was really it was a really interesting book because he just kind of like navigated through life and you know met people through the course of his day-to-day -day interactions and how he saw things and how he interacted how how he felt how he you know uh the the literal nature of of how he was um you know uh, mentally approaching a lot of the 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 tasks that were given to him or the the mental hurdles that he had to jump through to be able to you know make sure that he wasn't lying to somebody but at the same time you know he, you know, he's doing what he said he was going to do to this person, you know, it, it, anyway, uh, it was an interesting book, uh, just to kind of, you know, fully, it's fully immersed in that whole autistic kind of point of view. Um, uh, I found it, I found it pretty interesting. Um, so the, the reflection title for this one is um, uh, everyone's view on life is unique. Um, so there, I started this this reflection off actually with the, the the quote at the very end of the book was something that's kind of always stuck with me. He, um, you know, it, once again, this is a, a very literal, you know, person. Uh, everything is very direct in how he speaks, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, um, at the end of the, at the end of the book, he 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 wrote, you know, I wrote a I wrote a book, which means I can do anything, you know. And um, I don't know why that kind of just made me, you know, <laughs> maybe smile a little bit. Uh, that was like the very end of the book too, and. Uh, um, uh, I, it, it, like I wrote in this thing, it has nothing to do with my actual reflection. It was just something that I agree with them. You know, if you're like, it's the, um, the habit of, of writing every single day and, um, and, and slowly, but surely seeing, you know, what's in your head turn into a, a book on paper and, uh, um, and to be able to share that with other people, it, it's really something pretty magical. And, and it's, and it's, and it's hard. Um, it takes, you know, a lot of day-to-day -day diligence and habit building and good, you know, and a, and a strong value system and structure to be able to keep you going and to, you know, to, uh, keep persevering and enduring all these other things. Right. So I feel like if, if you can figure out how to write a book, you really can't do anything. So, um, you know, I, I, I agree with the character at the end of the book. I, that was something that kind of just made me get get the, the warm and fuzzies but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the actual the actual reflection of this um story from for me is what what this brought up in my own life was uh um that everyone's view on life is unique and uh you know in particular uh obviously this guy had a really particular view on life you know everything like it's it's you just sometimes forget that that the, the person you might be talking to uh, you know right now or do you encounter every day on the street might be thinking something completely different and seeing the world completely different than the way that you're seeing uh, the world or the way that, you know, you think other people are seeing the world. It's just, you know, it, the, the different paradigms that we view this world through is, is, is endless really. Um, and it's, and, you know, it, it's something, it's a great reminder always to, to, to be thinking through it. It reminded me personally, this, this story in general um, of a story that I've shared with you before. And I wrote about it in my own book of, um, uh, you know, a couple of days after my daughter had passed away, um, uh, my wife and I, we tried to get out of the house, um, just to do anything to, to, I mean, we, we didn't, we, it was hard to even get out of bed, um, you know, after, after our daughter passed away and, uh, um, you know, we, uh, agreed the, the, the first day that after my daughter had passed away that, you know, we wanted to 
to do something we could every single day to try to honor her. So my wife and I, we agreed to go try to take a walk every single night at the, at the time that our daughter was born, which was 5, 16 PM. So we would go out, um, you know, it was hard to even just literally just leave our home the first couple of times we tried this. Um, but I remember distinctly, um, uh, it's maybe like the second walk or third walk or something like that after, after Amelia had passed away. And, um, and my wife, Felicia, she was just bawling her eyes out as we walked down the street. And um, it was a beautiful spring day, like beautiful out. I mean, it was, it was like 75 degrees and, you know, mid April in Indiana, which is like usually, you know, best place you can be. Um, uh, it's, it's, you know, sun was shining. All my neighbors were out and about walking. There's a park right on the street from our house. So they were all, you know, having a good time, enjoying life, you know, out in the sun. And then, you know, on the other side of the street, you see uh, a man and a woman walking down the street and one of them is, you know, bawling their eyes out and the other one's staring down at the road and, you know, I don't, I don't know about you, but, you know, actually I'll ask you, like, what's the, what's the first thing you would have thought of if you and your wife and family were out, you know, walking back from the park and you saw, you know, a couple that one of them was crying. The other one was, you know, somberly walking down the street, like on a, on a beautiful spring day. I mean, what, what would have been your first impression or thought of what You're was the bad on? guy. For sure. I would have thought the same thing. <laughs> You're yeah. the bad guy. <laughs> right. I would have, I, I mean, uh, you know, the, the last thing in my mind would have been, oh man, they, they may have just lost their, their, you know, infant daughter just, a, you know, two days before this or something along those lines, you know, and they're just trying to get out of bed. Uh, you know, so th the, the different, in the, in the, in the next following months after that as well, I mean, I, I felt like I was living in a different world than, than pretty much everybody that was around me. You know, I'd go to dinner parties with friends or, you know, family get togethers or stuff back at work in the office, whatever it may be. Like I was in a different world than everyone else. I, I didn't think about the same thing. I didn't, you know, the, the same, the same triggers of life and emotions weren't triggers to me anymore, like, or, or vice versa, little things that shouldn't have been triggers were triggers, you know? And like, I mean, it, I literally can't, can't, it's hard for me to even describe the paradigm that I was viewing through life at that time in my life, but it was, it was literally, I was in a different planet. Mm -hmm. um, I felt, I felt like, um, so this, hearing this story of, of Christopher and, and, you know, how he was, you know, views the world and interacts with people. It, it was just a good reminder for myself that like everybody always views life, you know, everybody has a unique lens on life, you know, everybody has right. a unique paradigm and a unique experiences that have brought them to this moment that you're having a conversation with them today. Um, and, uh, and to respect that and to, and to, and to be curious about that and to learn, you know, um, and to, um, and to not assume anything, you know, so that, that that's, that's the, the high level and uh, overall, I guess, um, uh, reflection for the, for the day. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Well, so for me, the first, the first thing comes to mind is, you know, I, I keep reminding myself when I keep saying, you know, when you make assumptions, you make an ass out of you and assumptions. Yeah. And so <laughs> that, and, and that's really, you know, that's, that's the thing is one of these things, it's uh, really true just because, um, our tendency to, to see, uh, what was it the saying that, you know, what you see is all there is. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's the, I guess, the limitations in our human psychology is we usually take the shortest route or shortest, um, option, whatever that decision is going to be the shortest. And that's right. the, our, our, I guess, heuristic in terms of how we come into a decision. So when I see you and your wife walk, uh, you know, um, down the street and she's crying, I mean, I mean, I'll, I mean, out of nowhere, my, my mind would say, you know, he probably did something bad. Right. And, and so that's, yeah. Yeah. and that, that's the easiest way for us to, to make a judgment as quickly as possible. And, and I guess the problem is that we, um, Sometime, you know, most of the time, uh, in, in, in some cases, in most cases, it works out because of the, right. the um, you know, system one uh, from uh, Daniel Kahneman, right. system one, system two. Because system one is basically say, well, this is what I've seen before. And the likelihood of this is going to be uh, like that is going to be, you know, uh, the majority of the time or, or, or um, you know, it's, that it's correct. And so that's why we do it. But it doesn't apply to everything. And so we have to make right. sure that uh, when we, uh, you know, kind of come across something, especially to people, you know, it's, um, 
they are more than what what uh, is under the you know the surface, right? So we yeah. can't see underneath. So we need to not rely a hundred percent on our system one, but rely on system two, our conscious. Okay, let's think about it first before we right. start to say, well, that's how this person does, and that's the reason why they do it. But a lot of time, you know, most of us we spend the majority of our time inside our head and whether we are happy or sad is because of how we think right we suffer more in our heads than in in reality uh, whether right. you're hungry well that's re- a physical pain but most of our pain like your your headaches your stress and your worriness it comes from your head and we live in our own world and uh, people do do the same as well and so a lot of times a lot of time, if we judge people based on our heuristic, we will probably be wrong. Just because, yeah. just because human nature is, it's, right. it's um, you know, it's, it's just, I think there is a exceptional category that we need to pay special attention to. So I'm not saying like how that, like uh, kind of saying, you know, it, you know, is this someone is actually the hero, right? Meaning that right. they are doing a lot of stuff and they are using that. Um, yeah, we, would, we wouldn't be day. able to do anything like if, if we if we were constantly every single person that came across that's that's too much to ask you right, know what i mean right. like uh uh i i agree with you i mean like there, but, there, what I, but yeah. I think you know there, there is a special case i think in the category of human emotions uh we need to uh kind of pump the brake a little bit just yeah. because you know we don't really know until like you know you probably haven't seen this kind of perspective until you read his book because you don't have autism so you don't know until yeah. you 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 uh, kind of see from his perspective um well, i would I don't, know to, to be clear i'm not i'm not sure that the author like has autism either so i don't i don't know if I this is like a, i think, you think he so does. okay all right yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, um i i hope he does otherwise yes. i feel like that's pretty that's pretty um, messed up to write a book right. from a, um, right. you know yeah anyway um, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, but you know, like you know, like, you know, if if I were to you know walk down the street and I see your wife crying, and you walking right beside her, right? I would not know that you you had lost your daughter until I need to talk to you, until I, you know, do some system two processing. Because right. otherwise, I would know. The same thing with another story from uh, um, this uh, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, uh, right? By Stephen Covey. Yeah. He's talking about, you know, the, the kids, you know, the, the father and the kids, you know, going on the train and the kids were rowdy and yeah. were horse around and people are looking at him and he and he's not even telling them to stop, you know, and people look at him and say, you know, why are you letting your kids do that? You know, you're a bad father, blah, blah, blah. They didn't know that, you know, they just got back from the hospital where the mom has, you know, terminal cancer and, you know, it's not going to survive for, you know, for for long so yeah that you would never think about but that's you, what people are he was in a different planet i mean yeah. like i mean it, it's in it, i it's that's a great example to give that's 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 how i felt like as well <laughs> excuse me i didn't i didn't notice I, I i don't even know that i knew noticed my wife crying like i mean um in that moment i know i i did notice i think other people looking at us you know mm-hmm. going but i i didn't care i mean like it was it but at the same time, like, yeah, you know, have your own problem, you know, right. and, and <laughs> right. it's much uh, heavier than any, uh, any other insignificant glare and stare at you. Um, so right. I, I wouldn't, but you know, at the same time, you know, if you look back at it from the remembering self, you know, you look and I think people are actually looking and judging you and, and picking the best or the shortest uh, route to that decision as possible. And, you know, to be fair, it's wrong, right? Because, yeah. <laughs> because you know, yeah, even... no, I, 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 I think you hit the nail on the head of, of what you see is all there is, is fine for, 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 for most things. I mean, yeah, if you really wanted to engage your system too on, you know, macroeconomics or, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like things that, mm-hmm. things that you encounter every single day that you just, you just take advantage, you just take for granted and just keep going about your day. But I, I agree with you of the the human emotion side of everything. I think we've we've talked about this, you know, before in the past of like a you know the iceberg example, right? The, the right. tip of the iceberg. There's so much that goes into somebody's lived experience of of who they are and how they how they got to be where they got to be today. 
you know, um, that, that you have no idea. I mean, I, you, uh, like Will Smith is a great example of this, you know, that whole Oscars slap with Chris Rock recently. Like mm-hmm. I, I happen to recently read his memoir. So I feel like I know a little bit more that, you know, what's underneath that iceberg, but at the same right. time, like, you know, uh, there was a lot, th- that was way more than just a slap. Like, you know, that was, that was uh, right. Because uh, you know, he probably yeah. have some kind of, uh, you know, previous, I guess, experience with him and his wife for whatever reason right. and and whatever whatever that is that that his internal private atomic bomb that he had right right it, it just that uh, it didn't trigger until he started to see her and then that reminds him and he just acted because the atomic bomb already happened it right. happened previously between him and his wife or whatever happens in private we don't know and that's the, that's the thing is people go and they judge and just because you know he's a right. he's a you know a, a, a bad person or whatever but the thing is we don't know the whole story and the fact is that human emotions you only see 10 percent 90 percent is deep in underneath just like the iceberg would be and so if you are judging a person based on the 10 percent that you see the chances are you are going to be wrong You'd yeah. be wrong about your judgment <laughs> right, on that. And right. to me, that's why I'm saying for, for emotions, uh, try to pump the brake on the judgment until you know more. I'm not saying don't judge him. Uh, if he's bad, then he's bad. If he's, uh, if he's whatever, but don't judge him immediately without more information. And that's right. what I get out from, from, from this conversation, from the lessons from this book. I mean, this book sparks the, 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 the kind of like the perspective of you know what you see is not all there is there is much much more and especially when you encounter human emotions yep and, and uh yeah i i mean everybody's everybody's brain's different you know like this this kid has a brain that works different than everybody else and i mean but everybody does at the same time i mean so not I only this is, this not is just only such an kid, extreme example. but even for yeah. normal people Right. Because you 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 have a different experience and I have a different experience because you know for 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 you, you your experience makes you unique and how you deal with it or how it triggers you makes you unique in that in that way because right. even if I mean you don't have to be artistic to to have this because you no have this is to just an extreme mom. this is a, yeah this is an extreme example obviously of, well, of ex- like a, I mean, you know, for yeah. your your situation also extreme yeah. example I mean you know right. how many right. how many how many parents are going through the experience of having a a a, a, a preemie right? right and 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 that kind of experience or atomic bomb or whatever event that happens to you and how you deal with it that's completely like put you on on the the extremities of whatever spectrum of however you want to yeah you know label but, that but, spectrum. but but here's but here's the key i agree both of those are extreme events um and as we've talked about you know our, our mission is balance right you know uh, and that's what we hope to create the ecosystem the world that we want to create however we've also talked about this a lot you can learn a lot from the extremes to bring them back to live a more balanced life and i think as you're talking about this and applying this to your everyday life, I, I wrote this in the, the bottom section of it, you know, it's, it's these, these, these average folks re- remembering the lesson of that we're talking about that, mm-hmm. like, you're going to, you're going to encounter people in your job or your, your at the supermarket or whatever that are, that are probably just having a bad day or, or they're, or maybe they're having a great day or whatever. But the point is, is like you said, is don't assume, like it's seek first to understand. It's one of the seven habits, right? It's seek first right. to understand. And before, before, you know, you, you try to, you know, under, before you do anything, like when it comes to human emotions and interactions, right? Like, and that's, and that's how, you know, you, you should navigate the world um, mm-hmm. of how you interact with humans as, as best as possible. Obviously it's, you know, there's never a carte blanche, you know, statement of, you know, start, they should always do this. I mean, I, I mean, to be, to be fair, after we lost Amelia, I didn't, I didn't even give a shit if somebody was, I, I don't care. I didn't care about, <laughs> if I came across somebody, you know, that had a problem, I didn't give a shit, you know, like, and that's fine. Right. I don't, I don't want to know about your iceberg. I got a, uh, you know, right, exactly. Right. So um, it, it, you know, it's case by case, but, but, but I think this is a great lesson to apply to your everyday mm-hmm. life, you know, right. of how you interact with people. And it's probably more important to do it um, in your everyday life. You know, when you're talking to that, that tele um, telemarketer that just called to, 
to you know do whatever and you just you know want to lay into him because you're like uh, just annoyed by him but there's just another person on the other end of that job i don't know how they got there i don't know what their goal is or what they're doing that day but like you know chill out <laughs> you know what i mean like like, <laughs> like it's it, you know listen and and ask right, questions because sometimes and, right. you know sometimes you know you you are you going to uh a need to be a telemarketer at some point for whatever <laughs> you know right. yeah weird particular karma or, or or you know whatever you want to call it it goes back to hey you know for whatever reason you're the guy who's calling people <laughs> right Exa- exactly yeah i mean you're uh i, I don't I, I guess the the moral of the story is is like everybody is seeing things differently and everybody has different lived experiences and um and and it's important for you yes. to recognize that and to remember that when you're interacting with people um yeah um but uh but yeah i mean it's it was a great lesson learned. This is a really good book too. I I, I enjoyed it. It wasn't like super mm-hmm. long. Actually, uh, I before we jump here, um, I um, I talked about it in the beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, this uh, the, I actually stumbled upon this story because um, I saw an interview by by Donald Glover, um, who I don't know if you know who that is, but his his um, he's an actor. He does the he was on the show Community. He was he he's he's in a lot of movies. Um, he mm-hmm. um, is on that show Atlanta, I think is his own show that he created um and then he's also mm-hmm. a rapper um named childish gambino is his rapper um name and he's like incredibly talented like uh, like multifaceted like you know like writer actor producer director stuff like that you know i mean this guy's mm-hmm. just like super creative and you know he mentioned this is one of his favorite books and i was like i was like ah well if donald glover likes it it's gotta be a good book <laughs> to check out so so that, that was how, that was how I, I I actually stumbled upon this book, but I yeah, see. I would I would highly recommend it if you wanted to check it out and you were looking for a good fiction book. And you know, I think there's a good lesson that can be learned there either yeah. way with this particular book. But yeah. um, any other final thoughts? Definitely. I mean, I think you know that's that's the that's the key is for us to uh, not not take everything for granted and not uh, you know just see more and and expect there's more than just what you see. Right. And, you know, you, you're going to have a, a better uh, navigation uh, through life. Agreed. There'll be a, yeah. and, and you'll probably make more meaningful connections as well that at the end of the day, if you dig a little bit deeper, you know, right. um, Agreed. And, uh, and learn and learn more about them uh, and their, and the, the platinum role, right? Well, you know, uh, it's, you know, learn more about them. Um, so right. uh, the, qu- the question we can leave for everybody would be, what would happen if you always thought first to understand uh, in your life? Um, so something mm-hmm. to think about, ponder and uh, reflect about, and we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. Sounds good.